Ready? Okay. I'd like to bring to order the regular meeting in the Zion Park District, uh, January 17th, 2018, to order. Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. Commissioner McGarrah? Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Pye? Here. President Hartman? Here. All right. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting, dated 21 December 2017. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the personnel and finance subcommittee meeting board of commissioners dated 21st day of December 2017. I have a second. second. I have a second. Any discussion? Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay. Obviously my guess. All right. Um, I'd like to go ahead and approve the uh, agenda. Right, I would like to have a quick executive, uh, session. executive session. Okay. All right. Any commissioners' comments? All right. Anything from the attorney? Yeah. All right. Do we okay. Need to make a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm making a motion to approve the agenda for. January 2018. I have a second. I have a second. Any discussion? Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve um, the total unpaid bills for December 2017. to approve the minutes for the unpaid uh, didn't make the motion. Uh, the motion to approve the um, unpaid bills for two hundred sixty nine thousand twenty nine thirty five cents. I have a second. I'll second it. I have a second. Any discussion? Eric please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. President Harvin? Aye. Okay, next director's report. Okay, uh, I just wanted to again update even, it, it was written in my report about the stranded nuclear fuel gotcha. bills update and what's going on with that. Um, on top of the fact that Dave Nagel from the city sent out what I put in here, um, Brad Schneider came to the coalition meeting last uh, month and basically um, they have a lot of Democratic support. They're looking to get Republican support so that this will go forward as a bipartisan uh, bill. And they're hoping that that will make it have more success in passing. So they are working, and we're, we're all working, you know. Um, they, they really set this out as a grassroots effort. So um, I talked to the Park director in Wacasset, Maine, which is one of the areas where there is a Republican that they would like to get on board. Um, Al talked to the mayor as a mayor, and, and so it really is a grassroots um, effort. And um, so it's still out there, which is a good thing. Um, these, these things move pretty slowly, um, but maybe we will have success, you know. Um, I think that there's a lot of people that are learning about the situation. Um, there are other communities where the new plant has shut down, and so they're facing the same thing because there's nowhere for all that to, to go. fuel to go. So I think you know there is some momentum behind it. So hopefully that we will we'll just continue to um, see how that goes. Um, there is a legislative breakfast. In February, um, some of you have been to those before. Uh, Mundelein Park District is hosting this one. She has not asked me for an RSVP yet, but that's probably going to be coming here shortly because they're going to need to know how many people are going to come there. 
Um, it will be at 8 a.m. on Friday, February 23rd at the Regent Center in Mundelein. Um, so if you would like to go, I just really need to get an answer, yes or no, mm -hmm. probably in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I can RSVP. And our representatives are invited, so Sherry Jessel and Melinda Bush will be there. Um, how it usually goes is that the legislators each take a turn in, in speaking about what's going on in their districts, but we do it all together, and they understand the audience is Parks and Recreation Commissioners and Directors, so they know who they're talking to. Um, and uh, it's just an update. Um, Terry Link many times comes and he seems to, since he's been in the legislature probably the longest, has a lot of input on what's really going on in Springfield. Um, so it is a, uh, an opportunity just to interact with them. So let me know if you'd like to go. Um, we did receive our $1,500 Paderma accreditation check. Um, as you, if you remember, in 16, we did a full evaluation. That's a four-year process. So um, we do get a smaller um, evaluation with the consultant from Paderma each year. Um, but we stay, we've stayed accredited and, and we did get the money. And we use that money for our safety incentive program. So there's um, every pay period, there is a safety question. You answer the question, you get put in for a $25 gift card from Walmart. And then at the end of the year, um, if you attend the safety seminars and answer the questions, there's an opportunity to uh, get some safety incentive dollars that we have a group that um, is pretty dedicated to that. A lot of maintenance guys, but also it's open really to anyone in the Park District. So it's really to keep people focused on safety. So <coughs> just wanted to update you on those things, unless you have any questions about my report or anything else. Any questions from the commissioners? No. Okay. Um, Mound in the uh, comprehensive plan. Right. So um, I had this uh, firm called Design Perspectives, and uh, this guy's name is Todd um, Stanton, who actually approached me um, about um, because he watched our meeting online and um, said, you know, I know that you guys have some some bonding authority that we were talking about at our November meeting. Um, and so since we really have been talking about a strategic plan, a capital plan, a comprehensive plan, and what do we really need, I asked him to come and speak to our administrative staff team. And it was very enlightening, I think, for all of us. It helped us to really look at what do we need. And I think we've come to the conclusion that a comprehensive plan is really the direction that we need to go. So what that will do is we'll do a survey of the community so that we're getting input from our community before we start looking at our capital project plan, right? Um, is the pool valuable? Is, you know, are the amenities that we have what people want? Or are there other things that we're not doing that maybe we need to think about? So, um, in a comprehensive plan, you just really look at the overall operation, okay? Um, so, I just kind of wanted to update you guys that we are, we've talked to this firm um, at the conference this weekend. I'm going to see if there's any other recommendations from any of the directors that I uh, interact with or any of the vendors that we interact with um, that maybe want to come and give us a proposal also and um, <clears throat> that we're going to move forward with looking at a comprehensive plan. Um, it's not going to be inexpensive. They, they are an expensive proposition. Um, uh, we didn't get into real specifics, but I asked for a ballpark figure, and it's probably um, in the $30,000 range. So, yeah, it's expensive, but you get a lot of information. And it will be something that will give us a direction to go 
for the long range. Mm -hmm. For the long range, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's really where we are because we're getting the opportunity to get capital dollars now. So let's make sure we're spending them where our community is interested in in yes. utilizing them. And so it's just it's it, it is the right time to do this and to spend, even though it's an expensive proposition to do that. Um, the administrative team staff has been doing a lot of discussing about um, just educating ourselves to make sure that we're getting the most we can out of the dollars that we're spending on that. So, uh, you know, really looking at capital, what, what are the lists of things that we need, um, but we want to make sure that we're also laying that out in the most effective way that we can. So I just wanted to share that with you guys tonight just so that you know the direction we're going. I'm hoping really that we can have a firm um, in February or March, like under contract. No, so, then, on that, so then it's probably about an eight month process. Right. So we probably get through 2018 and really have our plan ready to go. So we're playing off our bonds, you know, which Eric has just made clear to us that, you know, um, 2019 we can really dive into laying out exactly what we're going to do in capital dollars um, after we have this process done and um, then we'll have some money to actually implement it. Yeah, that, um, that's a good idea. I mean, those comprehensive plans are yeah, it's been, eye opening. I think it's yeah. been probably 20 five plus years since one was done here. Right. So, you know, there's just, I mean, we, we've looked through it and, you know. Counts right. completely. Yeah. Yeah. Different. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. really Times is. Times completely changed. Completely changed. Right. Yeah. Christine got some um, demographic information the other day from San Alito, just kind of as, you know, all part of this process of, you know, really looking at. Mm -hmm. And the demographics have changed a lot, even from 2016, uh, or even from 2010 to 2016 and then 2021 is the next census and they're projecting some things um, so you know we really need to um, get a comprehensive think plan about together. yeah yep. think about that well and and you know we're gonna have the opportunity to really do some major projects and you know let's do that in the smartest right. way that we can so I just wanted to share that with you that that's the plan I don't have a contract but I'm hoping that we will Hopefully have by that next soon. month we'll be able to have maybe. a contract mm -hmm. and prove it. Yeah, maybe okay. February or March. Okay. I'm not going to promise February, but... Sounds good. <clears throat> any questions from any of the commissioners? Okay, move on to the IP IAPD annual membership. Right, so um, <clears throat> IAPD sent out a uh, invoice hoping that we would continue to be a member of IAPD, which we have been for probably since we started Park District. Um, the dues have not increased, so it's $4,999.75. <laughs> and um, I do think that we get benefit from IAPD for our membership and that it is an organization that we should support. They do a lot of legislative work in Springfield, you know, on behalf of Park Districts in Illinois. And um, so I think it's a value, and I'd like to, I'd like you to consider. Um, my recommendation is that we continue with our membership. Yeah, I think we uh, definitely need to keep it going. So we're going to make a motion tonight to go ahead and prove that we uh, keep to pay the invoice. On. Okay. All right. I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the IAPD annual membership. What is the dollar amount? $4,999.75. I make a motion that we renew the IAPD annual membership in the amount of $4,995.75. I have a second. 99 cents? No, 99 dollars. That's what I thought I said. You said 95. Forgive me, $4,999.75. Yes. All right, I have a second. Any discussion? All right, Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. 
Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay, next is NRPA. Right. Annual okay. membership. So the National Recreation and Park Association. The way that their membership works is <clears throat> we would, uh, what we have done for the past several years is a premier membership package which gives us the opportunity to um, participate in several NRPA programs. Um, we get, this is the IPRA magazine, but we get the NRPA magazine. We, they have um, workshops, webinar workshops that um, the staff can go to. Um, if we go to NRPA conference, we get that at the member rate. So it's $850. That has gone up. I think it was $750 last year. So it, it did go up some. Um, the one thing that's nice is that all of our full-time staff are part of that and commissioners. So everybody is part of that and, and um, you can receive the magazine in paper format. You can receive it in um, digital format so you get it just in the email if you don't want the paper. Um, and then it gives you the opportunity to participate in, in the um, educational opportunities as, as the, under the premier membership. So I think it's valuable for us to also have this membership. Those training, are they online or are they actually? It's both. Both? Mm -hmm. okay. But there is a webinar series, so you should be getting emails about that. Yeah. Carolyn, I don't think you're on there yet, but um, you should be, everyone should be. I'm not. Okay, so it might be because I of your email, email situation, but I can fix, I'm going to fix that. Yeah. So when I send in this renewal, I will update it. So Carolyn's on there, I'll fix your email. Um, I'm actually going to put your home addresses, so if you do want the magazine, it will come to your home instead of coming here, and oh. then you just get it when we have the meeting. Um, so I guess I need to know if you want a paper copy or not. Otherwise, it will go to your email. Um, but sometimes I would those that. emails come in as junk mail, so check your junk mail. Mm -hmm. okay. They do, and it's weird because sometimes they come through fine and sometimes they don't. Yeah, it's really weird. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the NRPA annual membership. I make a motion to approve the NRPA membership uh, at a cost of $850. I will second it. All right, I have a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay. I'm not receiving the email. Okay. I will make sure that I get that right. Yeah. You should You should be, so. Let's check it. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, check your jump out. I, I, Just a, I put your R Brown in Zion Park District. That's the email. And that's what it will come to for you. Triple check. Okay. Next is uh, surplus and the property disposal? Yeah, um, so we have a 2005 GMC 2500 pickup. It was involved in a traffic accident November of 28, 28, not 2018, 2017, sorry. <coughs> uh, the risk management, and it was not the driver's fault. It was not our driver's fault. It was uh, a vehicle that ran into it. So the risk management agency totaled the vehicle. Um, we did not give it up to them to dispose of because we wanted to take parts off of it because we have other GMC uh, products that we could use some of the parts, parts for. So we now have it though and it, it's ready to go now and now it needs to just get out of here because he took everything off of it that he wants to. So we just need to declare it surplus property so we can junk it. So we'll have to make a motion to go ahead and do that? Yes. Okay. All right, I will entertain a motion for the surplus property disposal. I make a motion to um, total out the 25, 2005 GMC 2500 pickup 
uh, that was involved in a traffic accident um, to the junkyard. I'm second. I'll second. I'm second. Any discussion? All right, Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. President Harmon? Aye. Okay. Next on the list, I will entertain a motion to uh, go into executive session. I need a motion to. Uh, I make a motion to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it? For the purposes of discussing the appointment. Employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of employees or officials pursuant to Section 2C1 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act. I have a second. I have a second. All right, I have a second. Eric, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Rivers? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Eight. 